On this episode of Rock Down South, we chat with Big Dad Rich of the rock band Texas Hippie Coalition. We talk about his signature red dirt metal sound, and he shares some hilarious stories that he had with Vinnie Paul, Ice-T, and Ivan from Five Finger Death Punch. We even have a couple of live songs for you, so you definitely don't want to miss this one. We hope you all enjoy. Let's go. Welcome to another exciting episode of Rock Down South, a show where my friends and I chat with musical artists and ask them the questions we want to know about. Today, we sit down and talk with the one and only Big Dad Rich. He's the lead singer and driving force behind the band Texas Hippie Coalition. And if you guys haven't heard them, you definitely need to check them out as they have this incredible Southern hard rock and heavy metal sound, a sound that is so unique, it was dubbed Red Dirt Metal. Needless to say, I'm a big fan of their music, and I was really glad we got a chance to chat with Big Dad Rich. He's probably the funniest artist we've talked to. He shares some pretty incredible stories that y'all need to hear. We also have a couple of really good live songs that I think you guys will enjoy. So without further ado, here's the interview. Big Dad Rich, how are you doing today, man? All the good, baby. All the good. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to jump on here. Really excited to talk to you today happy to be here myself so obviously you guys are from texas is it uh denison texas is that right sure enough right on the right on the red river right on the red river north of dallas border of oklahoma sure enough sure enough so yeah i've been uh been actually a fan of you guys for a little while i came across your music back i think it was 2012 or 2013 and got hooked on that peacemaker album uh that's a really good album by the way yeah, I mean it's uh one of our strongest ones for sure and it's uh seems to be standing the test of time still still getting paychecks for that one. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that cuz that is a solid solid record with a lot of really good songs I think that are still in your playlist today. Oh yeah, of course. And then uh, I think I saw you guys first time I saw you guys at Mayhem Fest back here in Atlanta in 2014. Uh do you remember that show at all? You might remember cuz it was super super hot. Oh, yeah, I definitely remember it. <laughs> I remember everything about Mayhem. It was super special. It was crazy I, uh, how things went day in and day out. You know, it was uh, it blew me away, you know, that we're basically taking a city. And that's old John Reese, actually, that done that. And we're moving that thing from city to city and state to state. And, uh, whew, man, I... Uh, I tell you, at times I just sit around and was just uh, in awe of the wonder of it all, to tell you the truth. And uh, day one, when I came off stage, I was greeted by Ice-T, a few members of Korn, and quite a few of the other bands that were on some of the side stages and stuff. And everybody was like, dang, we only came over here to check you out because you're one of the bands we never heard of. (laughs) (laughs) And they were blown away. As a matter of fact, you know, some of the members, uh, Brian and uh, a couple of other guys. And, and it seemed like, um, you know, a lot of the mushroom head guys, even that had a little bit of faith, you know, and uh, Ice T and all them, you know, they would all gather around and, for prayer because we always do prayer before a show and they'd show up and do prayer with us. I thought that was cool. You know, just awesome. all these different walks of life, you know, uh, not afraid to express their faith right there in front of a lot of people, even fans, you know, and just. You know, you can't can't build yourself around what other people perceive you to be. You know, you need to be yourself. So I thought it was great. You know, everybody there that was monster big made us feel great. And everybody there that was uh, trying to be like us, you know, and have a come up, you know, they were all seemed to be very great, decent human beings, respectful. You know, it was great. I, I love the whole experience. And that's why when it gets to it, it's hard for me to like, People always say, like, hey, you remember Dallas or Houston? It was hot. Yeah, it was hot all year that year. It was hot in Pittsburgh. It was hot in Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? But so, like, they all kind of run together. But I just do remember all the camaraderie and everything. And uh, I think that the one thing that, you know, because I'm a big boy, you know, I know that Georgia stood out to me because the food was a little better. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, i tell you the craziest thing, though, is that uh, Ice-T's uh, band's bus, broke down on the way to Dallas 
And uh, we had just all of a sudden started seeing stuff that, you know, Ice-T's band was going to uh, have to cancel the show because they were broke down. So we turned around and went back and got them and made sure they were there in time to do the show. Oh, wow. And uh, it was amazing to have everybody on there. You know, I was telling them all, I said, uh, you think Ice-T's a badass? I just stole his whole band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were all having fun. They're all good guys, great guys. And, you know, you wish you could keep in touch with everybody because you grow so fond of them. But it's just not the way this business works. You know, you just, you'd be around somebody heavy for a year or two and you may not be around them that that much again for quite some time but yeah thanks for bringing that up man that's a great great experience in my life i loved it that was a great tour i hope they bring it back i mean they were just packing those uh places full of bands all day long more music than you could possibly listen to in a day uh, it was a good time man i hope they bring that back because uh a lot of people got some really good exposure from that and saw a lot of great bands for one price it really like really gave us great exposure i mean uh i i actually told john reese and his wife when i left that from this point forward a lot of the good things that'll be coming to me is going to be because of them and i wanted to thank them for helping me get that come up it's very hard for this band to get a band to let us go out and open for them because we are a tough act to follow you know (laughs) So usually we just have to headline everywhere we go and to be able to be on that bill on that stage, you know, with those great bands that were, you know, that were on that stage. Um, it felt good. And, you know, they told me we were like top five in merch every night. And you could see the crowd move like a school of fish to our stage when we started, you know, it was crazy, crazy. It was awesome. I loved it. Would love to do it again. It was a good time. Hopefully we can do that again. I pray we can. And um, I kind of want to, you know, go into talking about your signature red dirt metal sound. And I know you've previously mentioned that I think it was a reporter who described your band that way, sound wise, and you guys just kind of ran with it. Man, it was actually, um, it was actually either Johnny Cooper, one of the guys in Cross Canadian Ragweed or Kevin Fowler. They were all there the night that it got coined, and uh, it's my understanding they all claim that they were the ones and take credit for it. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I really don't know who it was, but I know that, uh, you know, it's the heavy rock influenced by the country that has the power groove, but also has that Texas music, red dirt style storytelling in it. So, you know. I absolutely love your sound. You know, there's not a whole lot of bands in the kind of Southern hard rock space, you know, we're we're big fans, of course, of the classics, you know, the Skinners and the ZZ Tops and more classic rock side. And, you know, we love our metal bands like, you know, Pantera and such, but uh, you know, what I like about y'all is you guys come with that really modern hard rock heaviness and the catchy melodic hooks with that kind of Southern influence and all around sound. And uh, you know, there's just not much of that. And I think it really kind of gives you guys something special that I really enjoy. Yeah. I mean, we, You know, you can definitely hear the past in the music, but, you know, we're hoping that we're representing today. And on moving on to my, you know, I don't know if this is my sixth or seventh album, you know, it's it's always trying to reinvent yourself without stepping away from yourself. It's hard to do, but, man, to be able to be around for, you know, as long as we've been around and to be able to just keep putting out albums and, um, you know, I mean, gosh dang, you know, I don't... I don't think anybody ever sat around and was like, you know, old Richard Anderson, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be touring the world and playing in a rock band and making money. Huh? I'll tell you what, I'm I'm happy that I told everybody from the time I was a young kid, when I grow up, I'm going to be Johnny Cash. <laughs> <laughs> I know I ain't no Johnny Cash, but uh, I wear black all the time. <laughs> I damn sure and try to make sure that I represent being real and try to make sure it comes across that way in every way live uh, through the songs and i hope people have an understanding you know, I'm, I'm i'm not too different from them you know i got bills to pay and i'm still in satellite from the neighbor and <laughs> <laughs> outlaw stuff right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I know your first album that you put out with Texas Hippie came out in 2008 titled Pride of Texas what was uh, life like leading up to that? You know, uh, I mean, were you working regular jobs? Were you in bands for years? What does that kind of time look like, you know, real briefly? Well, 
you know, I had, a, I had my wife and I had my two children, my first two children. And, you know, I thought that, you know, we fell in love at a young age and we were going to be together forever, you know, and that, uh, it was that white picket fence was going to always be there. And I was going to be a fishing guide and I was working as a fishing guide making damn good money. And then all of that fell apart. She decided that, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that, um, you know, maybe I wasn't the man for her or whatever, you know, that crushing blow. And, uh, it just, uh, made me turn my life around. I just decided that instead of just going down the path that was easiest traveled in front of me, that I was going to try to go down the path that was my dream. And I started Texas Hippie Coalition and I've been, uh, I've been digging in that gold mine, you know, for quite some time now and don't plan on stopping. Oh, wow. That's uh that's an interesting story there. I'd never heard you you say that in any other interview. Uh, that's pretty cool. Man, I promised myself that during any interview, you know, if I could just avoid repeating what I've already repeated before, that'd be one good thing. <laughs> but second of all, I think it's important that, you know, for your listeners and people that are fans um, that might be reaching out to your channels just to listen to you listen to this interview uh, it's, maybe they need to know a little deeper you know after what we've gone through in the past few years um maybe people do deserve to know a little deeper about other people you know like i'm i'm crazy man i mean i do stuff that most people wouldn't dare do <laughs> you know <laughs> i mean i i tell you what i'm just gonna tell you the honest to god's truth if a lie get me through it easier than the truth I'll probably tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I told everybody forever I was going to open for Black Label Society. Total lie. They didn't even know who we were. <laughs> and I talked about it so much that our fans and their fans started intermingling, talking about it online until finally their manager called our manager and was like, who the hell are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Why is all everybody wants to see these guys. So we ended up getting eight shows with them. It's freaking awesome. Some of the, you know, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, the boss man's got some big balls, excuse my language, but <laughs> um, you know, he's got some because when you take this band on tour with you, I mean, his exact words of his sound man, um, what was Moby? And uh, they don't call him Moby because of the well. They call him Moby because he's a. <laughs> I know you know the word. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, That's but he's funny. a great guy. You know, he's I always say Richard's long for. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, you know he uh, he always would tell me, man, I like it when you're here. But I like you guys opening this kid been killer because you know, the big man comes out and he goes to work, you know, and that's what we want to do is we want to go to work. We work hard when we're on stage, man. And I got a band backing me up right now. Strong. Got a guy spending about 10 years. Other guys in me six or seven years, both on guitar, man. They make us strong. We have a bass player like we've ever had before. And our new drummer is just killing it, just murdering it, taking us to the level we need to be at. So, you know, when you look back at the band, you know, in all phases, I was always happy. But right now, I feel like it's not only am I happy, I'm just, I'm, I don't have to work as hard. It's just, it just comes easy. Well, that's super cool. You guys opened for Black Label and uh, Zach Wild. That's a really good pairing there for the fans. Probably have tons of fans crossover. Um, a band I was curious about, I've heard you speak about them in interviews that you'd seen them a bunch, you know, another Texas band, Pantera, legendary <laughs> band. Uh, I know you were a fan of them and saw them back in the day. Did you ever know any of those guys at all? Or do you ever get to open for any of the bands, you know, like Hell Yeah or uh, Down or any of the others? I played with Hell Yeah up in Colorado with Five Finger Death Punch. Oh, nice. Great show. Killer show. Got to hang out with Ivan that night and everything, get to know him really well. Uh, and his wife, great guy. He was telling me that he bought his wife a new Jeep and the first CD she put in it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I know how it feels, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, you always want your old lady to be driving around, you know, blaring your stuff to the speakers, but it ain't always that way. I've uh, I've lost out to old David Lee Roth and Ben Halen many a time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get to meet Vinnie Paul on that concert? Yeah, man. I, me and Vinny have crossed paths quite a bit. Um, Rita Haney invited me to a Christmas dinner at Vinny's house one night after Diamond passed. And uh, I got to meet him there. 
I got to meet his father, Jerry Abbott, which uh, I thought that was freaking awesome. Got to have a little conversation with him about music, you know, his legacy and uh, country music is, uh, yeah, he's legendary. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was a very nice guy. And, uh, you know, Benny was too, very hospitable and everything. Uh, but one night, hell yeah, I was doing their video at the clubhouse. So uh, Rita had invited me up there and I was going up there and I came in the front door and I had accidentally left my wallet at the hotel that I just left from or whatever. And uh, my buddy's like, don't worry about it. I got a stack of money. He didn't have to buy no drinks or anything, but they wouldn't let me through the front door. (laughs) Rita told me to go around back and she said, just go around to the back door. I'm going to let you in that back door. So I go around there and uh, the door opens. And all I hear Vinny say is, I don't know no S and B dad rich. <laughs> and I just started dying laughing. He looks up and he sees me laughing, you know, because it's funny to me because he really don't know me, you know. And uh, finally he's like, oh, okay. He sees me. He's like, come on in, come on in. I go on in. He actually makes me a seven and seven at the time, you know, and we talk a little bit. And I just told him, um, you know, how I knew it was hard, but uh, I'm just happy to see him back playing music you know and um i know that that day was as a fan even for me seeing him out there playing with hell yeah was a somber moment so i know that as for me as a fan you know seeing pantera 30 something times you know it made me really feel like you know thank god this man's back playing the drums doing what he loves to do and um so i know that even as, as a fan as far removed as i am from you know exactly what it is i know that it had to be a super powerful day for him you know i was thankful he just took the time to let me in the bar <laughs> <laughs> Vinny, rest in peace man Come on, brother. switching gears here um we got a question that uh you might find interesting what was the worst show that you've ever played maybe it was a bad performance you had a bad crowd a small crowd or maybe just a weird venue, but what kind of comes to mind? You know, I always give a hundred percent. So I don't even know if I, you know, I wouldn't even bear to say that I've ever had a bad show. I know that sounds cocky, but you know, just being in front of an audience, you know, is a great thing. I mean, even if you've been on stage five days in a row and you're feeling like crap, if that crowd feeds you enough energy back, it'll be one of your best shows ever, even though you're dead beat. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's always putting on that good show. So I always try to give 100%, you know, go as hard as I can, get in, kick the door in, get the hands in the air, get everybody screaming, sell them out in liquor and get off stage. I want them to leave them wanting more. And, um, but I did this show one time in Dallas. The show got booked. I, I, I don't remember exactly what was going on, but everything seemed kind of chaotic. And then we got to the venue. I'd never played that venue before. And in Dallas at this time, we're probably, I don't know, I would think that we were probably doing 150 to 200 draw, and we were probably getting paid $500 or something like that. You know, but we that night, we played to two people. There was two people <laughs> that paid to get in. Oh, like, I mean, I made sure that those two people got the best show they ever seen. You know, so when I think about it, I don't know if I've ever had a bad show. You know, I've um, I've had shows where musicians on stage maybe were being asinine or somewhat disrespectful or something, and I've had to go get in their asses on stage. I think I kicked a guitar player in the chin one time uh, <laughs> on stage. But that, you know, you might want to fit it for the worst show. But as far as performance, man, I mean... I think that even the people that came and seen me kick that old boy in the chin, I think they're like, damn, that was a good show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we now have a couple of live songs for you. This first song is off their latest album, and it's called Moonshine.
song is killer. It's one of my favorites. This next song is called Turn It Up. guys enjoyed those two tunes those guys really know how to bring it live now let's get back to the interview so these next three questions are what we close with and ask everyone so first question what would you tell your 21 year old self man that sounds crazy man but you know i invested a lot of time in my heart and love you know what i'm saying being in love with somebody and I invested so much in being sure that I had that significant other. And it probably slowed my row. You know, the dice still got rolled, lucky for me. And I still came up sevens and elevens, you know. So I feel good about that, you know. But maybe I would just tell the younger me, wait, because that perfect someone will come. It doesn't matter when they come, whether they come early in life or late in life. But uh, no sense in trying to rush something. It really, you know, it has to be earthy. You know what I mean? And uh, a lot of times people that are younger, they just forget that, you know, and better to go ahead and try to fulfill and live that dream while you're young instead of trying to live it out later when you're older. So I just tell my younger self, you know, 
Give them hell, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. So next question. What are you drinking lately? If you don't drink alcohol, it could be anything refreshing you'd like to drink. <laughs> well, you know, I'm from Texas, so I drink iced tea all the time, sweet iced tea. But, you know, when it comes to, to alcohol, when I'm hanging with the guys or, you know, we're just chilling or something, you know, I'm, I'm a Jim Beam on ice guy. No chaser, no mixer, just Jim Beam on ice. And, you know, I, I, I used to drink pretty heavy back in my days, but, you know, here lately, you know, it seems like if I have a couple of drinks, a couple of times a week, that's probably good for me. But it's just been Jim Beam for so long. I, I think it'll be Jim Beam from now on. Jim's a good one. So as you know, this is the Rock Down South podcast. So what is something or a couple things that you love about the South? Man, I'll tell you what. I, what I do not like is I, I don't like ignorance or stupidity. And I know that when comedians and, you know, when comedies or whatever, they want to reflect the South as being not as intelligible as others. I mean, I think that's where they're making a big mistake. I mean, there's a lot of the people that I know from the South are highly intelligible. You know, they're very smart people. So that's the one thing I like about the South is that people are, you know, they seem to have a, a, a good intellect and that they are not, um, you know, the South is, you know, we're, we're honest to a fault. You know what I mean? We, a lot of women don't turn around and ask somebody how they look. Cause they know somebody's going to tell them the truth, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I like the South because I get to see women that act like ladies and I get to see men that are gentlemen. Fantastic answer. Hey, thank you so much. Big dad, rich for being a part of the show today. Where can people find and connect with you online? Man, you know, you can hit me up on Instagram, Big Dad Rich, and even on Facebook. But just remember that Big Dad Rich, big is spelled like big, and dad is spelled like dad. But rich is spelled R-I-T-C-H. Rich rhymes with your mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And what do you have in the works that people should know about? Do you got some new music that might come out in 2022? Oh, for dang sure. For dang sure. Uh, we will be uh, finalizing the album, hopefully handing the uh, album over to the label somewhere, in, you know, into January, early February. We would love to have a single out in March or April representing us and then getting us ready for an early summer tour and a, a late fall tour. Anything else you want to tell people about? Maybe some barbecue sauce that you might have? <laughs> You know, um, I would love to take the chance to plug the barbecue sauce. And if you guys want to go check out uh, ghcoutlaw.com, I believe it is, uh, you know, um, keeping all things outlaw down here, check out texasippicoalition.com. It'll lead you there or whatever it's called. I don't even remember anymore. I usually say it so much, but I, I, I just quit worried about plugging everything. But what I do like to talk about is, mental stability and i think that a lot of problems with a lot of people out there is everyone thinks that everyone around them is mentally as capable and has brain function as well as they do and it isn't always the case some people trigger they fire differently they work differently and uh, even though someone may not think exactly the way you think or may not share the same values as you and you know, maybe you see them as their uh, compass is broken. You know, it's it's just that we all are a little, we're all a little mentally off, every single one of us. And we should all have common courtesy and respect for others. Let them express themselves. Let them have their right to say and let them have their right to choice. And whenever it comes down to all of that, when it comes to mental stability, which is something I'm I'm championed for a long time. I think that people in certain jobs that have certain jobs, they should definitely have a mental background check. And I think that anyone that is in a place of hurt or pain and is not able to function, and, and no matter what manner it is, whatever it is that they cannot function with, that we should all be so generous and kind as to reach out and help them. I know that um, 
whenever I'm, I'm hurting mentally, you know, I, I like to reach out to different things. Lord, my savior, friends, close counsel, and just to try to help me get through it. You know, every, every mountain of a man has to weather a storm now and again, and it's always good to be able to be amongst other mountains so you can help them get through it. So I think that everybody in society, everybody out there listening, try to be a mountain for your neighbor, help them out, especially if they're struggling with any kind of uh, mental anxiety or mental disproportion. Let's all, let's all get in there and, uh, you know, it's not about the people. It's not about those people, your people, my people. It's about humanity, and uh, we should do it just out of the kindness of our hearts. So not the best plug for a barbecue, but uh, I hope I reach somebody and let you know that you're not the only one out there that's struggling, and uh, other people that have struggled before and made it through it, look to them, and maybe you'll find a way that will help you come up out of your struggle. Great parting words, and uh, I'm going to pick up some of your barbecue sauce, Rich. Rock and roll, brother. It's the best on the planet, and I ain't lying. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I had a really good time chatting with Big Dad Rich. As you can tell, he's a super funny guy who's genuine and makes some really great music. I can't wait to see him play again live next time they come through town. Make sure to go follow Texas Hippie Coalition and Big Dad Rich on all of their social media pages and check out their tour schedule as they may be playing somewhere near you pretty soon. Check out all our content at rockdownsouth.com and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest updates. And as always, the views and opinions expressed by our guests on the show are theirs and don't necessarily reflect our own. I'm Mark, and you've been listening to Rock Down South. See y'all next time.